Welcome back everyone, I am the Depressed Dior and this is Madara. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the board here. Um, we did forget to do scoring, so I'll go, go ahead and do that now. Each monster killed is 2 points. We killed 4 Cave Sickles, which is 8. 2 Water Lois, which is another 4, bringing it to 12. Uh, 2 Gavadin, which brings it up to um, 16. And an Animate, which is 18 points in total, bringing us to a to total score of 90. Which I think is probably the highest score you can get in this. Alright, so clear the board. Looks like everything's taken care of. I'm just going to check this to make sure nothing got grabbed that shouldn't be. And it looks like we're good to go. Alright. So, with that, let's go ahead and do making the grade. Uh, the lift rumbled to a... Uh, making the grade. The lift rumbled to a stop, depositing them back onto the castle floor. Now there was only a single man waiting for them, a hawkish professor with gnarled skin who had taught... Uh, rook basic swordsmanship in his first year. Professor Grisham uh, made no sign that he even recognized Rook now, standing by the door with arms folded. He held a thick envelope in one hand with their name scribbled on onto the outside. Nightingale got to him first, trying to snatch the envelope and get to at the scores inside. Professor Grisham was too fast. He gestured down the hall as he moved the envelope out of Nightingale's reach. The armory aw is awaiting for you. Everything gets returned so next year's gradu graduating class can use it. And don't try and sneak anything. I'll be keeping keeping an eye on you, Miss, Ar Miss Arzen. Yeah, yeah, Nightingale said dismissively, and he finally lowered the envelope, letting Nightingale tug it out of his hand. They started walking towards the armory, Nightingale tearing furiously at the envelope as they walked. Even Rook felt his patience running out as he leaned over her shoulder to see. His whole life might very well turn on what was written on that sheet. The doors to the armory were open. Instead of shelves of pre-stocked uh, packs, there were rows of worn-looking chests, each with one with a label. A stern proctor named Bardiche uh, gazed through cracked gap glasses uh, at, at them, both arms folded. Everything except your clothes and those scores goes into the boxes, he said, gesturing around the, uh, the room with a worn practice sword. We know exactly what you brought into the mast. Bardiche tossed the sword into a pen, lifting a clipboard and pencil from a nearby shelf. If anything is missing, there's going to be trouble. Remy raised her hand, clearing her throat. Uh, excuse me, but are, we aren't going out into a linea and an arm, are we? Isn't that, like, against the law? Bardiche indicated a door on the far wall, one that, that had been barred the last time they came through. Once you turn in everything, you go through here, or go through there. You can pick some new gear with the gold you earned. They started emptying their bags, sorting through everything away into the appropriate chest. It was a tedious process, made more so by the Proctor's watchful eyes. Apparently, Nightingale was thinking sim along similar lines. If any of you want to go adventuring again soon, I mean, the real kind, uh, talk to me. I'll probably have to go away for a few months while I train for the Demiurge, but once I get back, however comfortable Rook may have felt with his new, uh, new friends, he didn't point out the obvious. He was the son of farmers. The odds of him running around Alinea with a princess seemed low. Zeke didn't share Rook's low status, though apparently he had the same reservations. You think your father will let a princess put herself in danger like that? If my father is half as smart as everyone uh, says, he'll be jumping at the chance to train a capable daughter. Adventuring is what make, made our families rich, isn't it? How could he be ex upset uh, that I want to do it too? Zeke didn't argue. We all wish you the best, Knight. When you're the Demiurge, I'm, I'm sure you'll do the great things. Yeah. Nightingale smiled, smiled again. Her old enthusiasm seemed to be returning. We all will. They continued to the armory in the next room. Glittering steel hung on every wall. Swords, axes, hammers, and other weapons. There was armor, too, and a few simple enchantments. Uh, these weren't the relics unearthed from beneath the white vaults, but they were respectable tools. All on the other side of the metal grate, with a quartermaster standing on the other side, arms folded. Nightingale passed their vouchers through the single large opening, grinning widely. Here's our scores! Congratulations, the quartermaster grunted, voice completely flat. He dug a handful of coins out from under the counter and set them down in front of them. Buy what you like, but make sure each of you leaves armed. Add up the points earned through all four mast encounters, then go through the following steps. Return all starter packed weapons, armor, cores, and disciplines. Keep all, any consumables you didn't use. Any gold and items gained during the mast are kept. Determine your mast grade below, then spend gold and XP using the shop and train rules on the next page. Leftover XP and gold is recorded on the adventure sheet. So 60 points gets us 240 gold and five experience each. Um, so essentially you really only need 60 points to get the max grade. Uh, the, neat, the interesting thing though is the lower your score is, the less experience you get, but you get more gold, uh, which is kind of different. Um, 
So the better you're doing in this game, you'll generally have more experience, uh, but you'll tend to, uh, and the way it kind of balances it out, if, you, if you're just getting your butt kick, um, instead of getting, uh, to make up for your lack of experience, I'll usually give you gold to kind of help you buy some, some additional gear. Anyway, we get to keep consumables, we get to return disciplines. So for now, we'll put those there. More than likely, I'm going to pick up Mend, because Mend is amazing. Um, we keep consumables, we return everything else. So all of this gets returned. Yeah, so if you happen to like loot anything like a unique item or get the uh, the, the monster loot and stuff, you would be able to keep that stuff. Um, my previous playthrough, I kind of messed up the loot uh, mechanics. Um, I wasn't actually restoring the deck where I should have been. So I actually ended up getting one unique item, uh, which was a core. Um, so I actually, which does help a little bit because it means it's one less core you have to buy. But unfortunately, we just have money. So we'll just have to make do. Uh, do, do, do. We're just putting all the cores together all the armor together. We're going to go ahead and return everything at once and then we'll deal with the shopping. It's just easier to do it that way. And we get to decide kind of what sort of builds we're going to do now. So go ahead and return that to that. Technically I could just pile all this together and just drop and then do sort, but that's, it's fine. We can just do it this way. All right. So a few things to note. Um, so we need uh, that. So the these uh, discipline decks actually have decks inside them. So each by level. So we're just going to do this. That is strange. Is all of them like this? Okay. Something happened to the assemblage deck. Okay. I think I fixed it. Um, so I went into configuration, turned off mod cache, caching, and then I reloaded everything, and that forced everything to refresh. Um, so it looks like my things are okay now. If I search, yeah, that seems to be right. Okay. So we got our assemblage. Uh, we need to grab this. All right. So there's all of our martial stuff. All right, yeah, it looks like everything else is okay. Uh, things are lagging a little bit because I just did like a full refresh of everything. So uh, whenever you turn off mod caching, it literally will load everything every time you load it. So that's a thing that will happen. All right. So we have access to all disciplines, all that good stuff. Um, but first, let's go ahead and take care of this. Five experience each and then 240 gold. So we're going to have a total of uh, 363. 363. And then five experience, five experience, five experience, five experience, which is um, uh, level one costs three experience. So we still only have enough to just get one, it looks like. I don't think we missed anything else here. look like we got anything else that's all right so yeah we got our five experience um everything else gets kept and then shop and train you may spend gold and learn disciplines with experience in addition you may trade any gear amongst your party members and party stash the store contains the following items for sale after uh, completing this step return all items to the respective decks after purchasing items item upgrades and learning disciplines continue to path of uh, to citizenship page 22 Tip, character builds and buying items. You'll be able to learn any level one discipline at this point in the story. There are 35 different disciplines available to choose from with 110 different disciplines accessible over the course of the story. The amount of options uh, can be staggering. If you're unsure which one uh, to get, try purchasing something close to the starter pack you use during the mask. Mundane art items are marked mundane on their back. Accessories ha have no indication of a rarity, but are usually avail always available uh, for sale during e every story round. To learn how to unlock item upgrades, see page 28 of the rulebook. 
Uh, all mundane items are available, all non-unique accessories are available, all item upgrades uh, players have unlocked are available. We have not unlocked any upgrades. Uh, to unlock an upgrade, uh, you have to essentially turn in a monster loot. Uh, monster loot does have uses. It's, it is a, essentially a, a gear card. Um, so it's kind of a choice of whether or not you want to just keep the, the monster item or turn it in to essentially get a, a um, upgrade. And then once you unlock an upgrade, um, you can uh, use it to kind of buff up your stuff. Unfortunately, we didn't get any monster loot, so we don't have anything uh, to work with. So, um, also most uh, shop and train um, parts usually include a unique item, but this one doesn't. Uh, this is the only shop and train that doesn't include a one random unique item, so we don't get any unique items here. All right, you might have noticed I just edited uh, the transition here. Uh, you might notice the layout's changed. So, uh, for anyone who's familiar with how I generally record things, uh, anything that's generally new and something I'm very excited about, I tend to record in bulk and ahead of time. Uh, so, as of recording this, I've technically gone through all the way to chapter the start of chapter two and done a bit into that. Um, I ended up t taking a step back though, and after reviewing all the footage for at least the at least the latest chapters I was working on. Um, and then kind of looking at some of the uh, some of the previous chapters where I had to do a lot of like captions and backtracking and rewinding uh, due to a lot of mistakes I made. Um, I decided to go ahead and just scrap uh, all the progress I made and uh, go ahead and just continue from this point, uh, which is where we just finished the mast. So, uh, but there's a bunch of new things. The other reason I wanted to do it is simply that I was talking about the layout for the board in, the, in a lot of these previous videos. And uh, the board layout has changed. Um, as of recording this now, um, they are on their way with working on chapter three, and they have supposedly all the scripting done for uh, chapter two, all the way through chapter two now. Uh, it's not entirely true. They didn't actually get the bounty book finished, it looks like. But other than that, everything else has been kind of improved. They even improved the layout down here. Um, so as you can see, they kind of changed it uh, so you can actually click and manipulate things and change your casting die and all sorts of cool stuff. Um, so there's definitely um, uh, a lot of changes here that are worth uh, pointing out at this point. So um, so yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and point out those changes now. So as you can see, there's the values here. You can actually edit them by clicking and right-clicking, very much how you can increase and decrease your health. Uh, so it's actually very easy to kind of fix everything that you need to fix. You can click, right-click and left-click these dice to change the colors. And then, of course, it's very easy to keep track of your uh, stamina now. Um, now, just something to point out, if you're using anything like summons or additional characters, um, those, unfortunately, you'll still have to have a... Uh, you have to use these uh, little uh, stamina markers to actually keep track of them. So, pretty standard stuff. So, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and reset everybody to uh, their base, because obviously we just turned in all of our gear. Also, uh, being able to rewind like this kind of gives me an opportunity to kind of try something else out. Um, I tried some new things that I didn't do on my personal playthrough. I also found out big, major mistakes I made in my personal playthrough that were rule-related, rule so it's uh, still a bit of a learning experience. There's, um, I still say the rules are pretty well-made, but there's always sometimes that edge case that seems to always niggle at me. Um, the good news is it, there's the Discord that I've been going to and just asking questions, and people have been pretty good about answering them. And to be honest, I usually take their feedback pretty seriously, um, even if they're not, you know, admins or whatever. Um, so it looks like everything's been reset here, so that's good to go. Um, I, I looked at previous footage to make sure I had the right stuff, so these are the consumables we had. Um, our goal was 363. We had five experience for everybody. I still need a set character name, so we'll go ahead and do that n now. Um, so anytime there's a major update, the only way you can get that major update is literally to uh, load a fresh module again, and then uh, go from there. Um, so that's kind of what I had to do a few times. So I actually had a few saves. They're like LP1, LP2, LP3 because of all the updates. All right, uh, Zeke Chong. I will definitely say one of the things that can get you wrecked, wrecked in this game is becoming complacent. Um, there are definitely a, a few situations where all of a sudden I just got blindsided and take like, you know, 15 damage or, you know, 17 damage on one hit and then just get wrecked immediately. So it's a, it's a bit brutal, but all right. 
So we're in the shop, I believe. Yep, that's right. We're at the shop. There's no non. There's uh, no unique assess. Uh, no unique items to mess with in this one. And we got 35 disciplines to play around with. And uh, we get to go from there. So we have enough uh, We have enough experience to get one level one discipline at this point. Um, I generally like going to assemblage um, because I like messing around with the summons and conduit summons. Um, in my first personal playthrough, that got all the way through chapter one. Um, I did, I messed around with the summoning, um, and then the scraps of recordings I actually did summoning and conduit summoning, summoning, which was very, very interesting. Um, so with that in mind, I still want to do them because I do want to show it off. It also just has a lot of advantages. Um, conduit summoning is very, very interesting. It's also one of the things I made a lot of rule mistakes with when I first started using it. So I definitely want to do it right this time. Um, unfortunately, we can't get to that until we get to level 2 stuff, and so first we need to work on getting level 1 things. So for Rook, um, I tend to keep Rook doing the same thing, but I think I'm going to change things up a little bit. But I, it's the problem is, is I only have enough <laughs> I only have enough to buy one discipline right now. That's what's, that's what's so, uh, so rough about this. Um, I think for right now... For right now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have him take Mend again. Do the, yeah, I think I'm going to have him take Mend again. The other option is I can go Courage Stifle. Courage Stifle is a lot of fun. Um, essentially makes it so... Oh, by the way, they changed the um, Discipline stuff. It used to have a bunch of decks in them, and now it's just all the cards together. I kind of liked it better when they were separated by level, which was a little annoying. So let's pull out Courage Stifle. So Courage Stifle is you cast a spell 6 and you deal damage equal to times 2 your total armor value. Um, and a single combat die of your choice that is printed on the equipped shield or blunt uh, weapon is considered a spell casting upgrade. So instead of using like a wand or a staff to get your upgrade, you can get it just purely from your shield or your uh, blunt weapon, which is really cool. So one thing we definitely need is that we need at least one person that can do magic damage. Um, and anyone, uh, so I think what I'm going to do, uh, originally I had, uh, my first playthrough I had Nightingale be a summoner, and then I had Remy be an archer, um, and then on my second attempt I had Nightingale go conduit. I think I'm still going to have Nightingale go conduit still. Actually, I can have Zeke go conduit. I think I kind of want Zeke to go conduit at this point. What would it take for him to go conduit, though? Search. That actually might work out for that. That might actually work out better. That wouldn't be too bad. One thing, so one of the, uh, Zeke is the one character I have the most trouble figuring out what I want to do with him. Um, And I think I kind of want him to go summoning. Or not summoning. Uh, I can have him go conduit. And that would take care of a lot of my issues with him. I think that might be a thing. Okay. So if I'm going conduit, I need to get one assemblage ability. And I think I'm going to get Banished Knowledge. Alright. So I want to give him... So what I originally was thinking of having Zeke do is go Sanctus and support stuff. I might still have him go and support stuff. But at least with this, I can have him do the support stuff. Uh, so what Banished Knowledge does is it's, it costs 2 stamina and you exhaust it. Any, and you, an ally within SOI gains haste. And you reduce the cost by one if you if you target someone other than yourself. Uh, what haste does is during your status phase you get plus one stamina. So essentially, every at the start of all your turns you'll get four stamina instead of just three. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and give him banished knowledge. Put him to two, and we'll see what we can do from there. So we still need to get um, so our summoner, whoever our summoner is gonna be, I'm going to take familiar. I haven't tried out Familiar yet. It's kind of weird. So Familiar is 
after learning this discipline, uh, choose a familiar and place it face up next to your adventure card. Your familiar cannot be changed. Uh, so here, the, the familiars are all in here. If you search them, you have uh, Yuxa, the, the Yuxa, which is exhaust when you deal damage to an opponent to heal one. And you can flip it to, uh, to dodge and gain plus one stamina. Uh, there's Tristram Spirit, which is you can exhaust to get a follow-up to deal physical damage equal to your highest assemblage discipline. And then remove an effect from a figure uh, with an SOI as a flip effect, which is not bad. Uh, Tatva Familiar gives you um, plus one movement, and you can flip it to uh, not provoke break attacks until end of turn. And then the last one is plus four health, and uh, you can flip it to do a essentially a throwing knife. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take Animism and give that to whoever's going to be our summoner. I'm thinking it might be Remy. Yeah, I think I want it to be Remy. So we'll go Remy for that. And our familiar slot is right here. So this will essentially set her HP to 16 right off the bat. And then if you flip it, all you do is get the plus four health. So the only bad part is essentially a throwing knife. You can only do uh, every refresh. And we're not going to get as many refreshes uh, from now on. But the main reason I want the health is the more health, uh, your health is uh, of your summons, a lot of your summon stats are matched by yours. So the more health I have, the more health my summons will have. So I think that's a good trade-off. Uh, so that's going to take care of her. Uh, so they'll put her at three. Or sorry, at two. Uh, for Nightingale, I usually take it, I usually make her act, an actual spellcasting nuker type character, and I think I'm going to have to stick with that. Yeah, I think that's going to be best for her. Yeah, one way or the other, we're going to have to take somebody with a spellcast, and Euthan uh, Euthanasia is pretty much the best nuke spell as I as far as I'm concerned. Uh, everything else doesn't. The only other magic damage things we could mess around with is something like uh, Sanctus. You know what? I'll have her take Sanctus. Why not? Let's change things up. So Courage Stifle. I think that's what I was talking about earlier. So we'll take Give Her Courage Stifle for a change of pace. It's either that or I make her the healer. And then make Rook the the monster. That might be an option too. All right, we'll have Rook have that, and then I'll have uh, Nightingale take uh, Mend. So essentially, we have two uh, we have two uh, two assemblage. Take a Banish Knowledge, Courage Stifle, and a Mend. So she'll end up messing around with these heal tokens from now on. And then I guess the question is, is what sort of weapon do I want her to use? All right, so we need to start doing our shopping anyway. So let's go ahead and get a, uh, I want a Warhammer again. Uh, originally I did something like Shield and Axe like hand axe or something like that. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do for Rook is go Warhammer and Shield. And we want him to have a medium shield. Uh, the Buckler is pretty good. It get, uh, The Buckler gets you more mobility. It gets you things like being able to move one space diagonally, which is pretty useful. But the medium shield has things like you can get finesse white with it, so you'll do white uh, a white attack with a medium shield. Uh, but in both cases, the, they do the same thing, which is give you plus one armor. All right, so combination with uh, comboing with a shield will get plus one and heavy. Of course, Rook ignores the first heavy, so he's good to go on that. Um, so that's going to give him two armor right off the bat. And then, of course, we're going to want to get him a Curus. That'll give him another two armor and two health. So that puts him at 16 and four. So whenever you do Courage Stifle and cast a spell, if it goes through, he's going to do uh, times two his total armor value, which is going to be eight. 
So eight damage, just raw magic damage. Really, really good stuff. Um, Rook became just a monster when I got him this ability, and I didn't get the, him this ability for a while. Um, the first, I ended up going Mend and then going Aspect, which gives him a lot of mobility. But I think going this is a better option. And then I could pick up Mend later, and so we'll have two healers. I definitely want pe two Mends because eventually you're going to run out of heals, and you need the healing badly. All right, so with all that said and done, um, I want to curse. I tried messing around with the leather jacket. I just I do not like it. So we're gonna go with we're gonna go occult shirts and curses this time. Actually, the leather jacket might be okay for what we're going to be doing. So yeah, we'll actually take the leather jacket. And then we're taking one more Caress, and we're going to put that on Remy. Mainly just for this, uh, that once per encounter ability to ignore all physical damage. If a stray hit comes at her, I want her to be ready to just soak it. Uh, the culture will go to Nightingale. The badass leather jacket will go to Zeke. So we got that going for us. Uh, that will set uh, her movement to 7. And she's going to get 3 health, putting her at 15. And then he's going to get 4 health, putting him at 16. And he's going to get plus 1 armor. She's going to get plus 2 health, putting her at 18. And then plus 2 armor. So we got that going for us. Uh, we need to get some more weapons. You need to make sure you at least get a weapon. I know I'm, I, need, I still need to spend the money, but I'll, I'm going to do that last. Once we distribute everything, uh, so for Zeke, um, I did throw I did throwing daggers, and I just I, it has backstab if you have two thief daggers, but it just does not work out. Um, a hand axe does the same amount of throw damage, and you can use it. You can exhaust it if you combo it with another axe to just get another attack if you ever miss. So I think that's pretty good for the early game. Thief daggers by themselves are kind of just meh, and backstab is just hard to set up at early game. Um, in the higher levels. Um, thief, the, the various thief daggers will actually get higher in their throw damp, their, their die type, so they'll go from like purple to orange and, and higher. And the the axes, the hand axes, will get stronger in general, but they won't. Their throw will still be purple. So for right now, in the early game, we're gonna get him two hand axes for Zeke, and he'll essentially throw them at his enemies for a big wall up. Uh, one thing I tried doing with Zeke is to go like all throw, but I don't think I'm going to go all throw this time. I think I like the Spanish knowledge strat to get some haste going. Um, so two axes, and then we need to pick a weapon for uh, Nightingale this time. I might make her an archer. I kind of want a ranged weapon. If your your paired weapon doesn't have finesse white, gain finesse white. Plus one armor piercing. That's not bad. And then there's a long bow. I like I like the idea of Yeah, I kinda I originally gave her I usually gave her a magic staff, but magic staff is just hard to use, I find. Uh, as long as it doesn't, the spell, that spell didn't have the per encounter or flip condition, uh, cast the same spell again. Yeah, I might go, it's either there I go hand, dual hand crossbows or hand crossbow with shield, but honestly it doesn't combo well with a, a small shield. Um, the great hammer is hilarious, but I don't think that's something I want to mess with right now. Yeah, I think we want one person with a longbow. So I'm going to give that to Nightingale. I usually gave it to Remy because Remy, of course, can fly around. But honestly, you don't want her, you don't, you don't actually don't want your archer to be moving around a lot. So having her have a bow is kind of detrimental. So, so longbow does purple white, has six range. If I don't move, uh, take a move action before firing, I get plus one to the attack roll. And then if I get two spell books, um, Every two spell books will give me a follow up of move one space, so I can move that way if I need to. All right, so that's everyone with a weapon except for Remy. 
So what do I want to give Remy then? You don't have any spell casting or anything like that. You have a you have one throw, but that's not gonna do much. I mean she doesn't really have anything she needs to like combo really. There's crossbow that does three armor piercing, that's not bad. I tried doing Hellbird, I don't really like the reach bonus. It just doesn't work out uh the way I want it to. So what else could I possibly use? I mean, I can always do War Axe and just go nuts with that, or go double Short Swords. Hmm. Whatever I go with, um, will affect, uh, when I go summoning, it will affect my summons as well, because it takes my damage dice. So combos with light there. So I can go orange-purple and get some maneuverability. Or go dual wielding long swords and hope I do damage. I think I might go double short swords, but I want to try something different if possible. I don't really want to do wands at this time around. Morning stars, uh, when countering, you can reroll. Don't really care about that. Yeah, I might go war axe again. I like the I like the ability to get, convert books into damage if necessary. So let's grab a war axe. Uh, there'll be more weapon types to mess with once we get to chapter two, so we'll have some options later. But I think I'm going to go for this. All right, so at this point, let's tally up what we got. 18, 36, 56, 86, uh, 101. Say 101, uh, 137. 152, 182, 202. So we've used 202 gold, putting us at uh, 161. So we have 161 gold left to play, uh, get uh, cores and accessories. So for our cores, we're going two utility and two defensive, period. It's just, they're so good. Um, the extra health, being able to get a dodge, it's just really pretty handy. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's 15, 15, so that's going to be a total of 60 gold, putting us at 101. Alright, so I'm okay with you having a utility core. You need a defensive core because it increases your health. So that's going to increase your defense to 10, which it already was. It gives you 20 HP. This is the highest HP I've seen so far. Um, this is going to set your conviction to that and give you one defense, which you already got. Uh, so you're going conduit. So 
So let's do this. Because if you're going to end up going conduit, you're going to pref it's going to be better for you to use utility cores. Uh, one of the things about transform using conduit summons is you can't use your abilities on your cards because you're technically not that person anymore. All right, so this person is going to get to uh, 20 health as well, it looks like. So 14, 16, no, it should be 8, eight no. Uh, so he has 14 health, gets plus 2 from Curris, and then plus 2 from Defensive Core. So yeah, he should be at 18. And then you should have Conviction White there. All right. So that leaves us with 101 gold. Uh one thing we want to get for accessories is we want to get a quiver. Which is 30 gold. Uh, so a quiver makes it... Uh, so usually you can only have one arrow relic equipped at a time. Um, but with a quiver you can have an extra one and it doesn't take up, and it doesn't take up a relic slot. So technically you could have two uh, arrows and essentially another two relics on top of that. Um, also, while you're comboing with Archer, you can exhaust this to reroll any single die except black. So it's pretty good for an Archer. Um, we'll go ahead and grab one of the arrows. We're not going to grab the other one, though. So this arrow here, I'm just going to put it to the side that sh show that's equipped on this. Um, it combos Archer, gives you plus one range to your, uh, to your attack. Um, and then if you exhaust it uh, before you make an attack, the target cannot dodge. So... That was 15, 45 gold. So that puts us at uh, 57, 56, sorry. Yep, so that puts us at 56. There's definitely a lot of good relics, uh, accessories that we want to mess with. But for right now, I think we want to go ahead and grab some of these other things. If possible. I kind of want to grab two fight drives. Let's grab one fight drive and accessor another accessory. I think that's going to be a good combo. So who's missing a dodge? You are. You are technically missing a dodge. Which means the leather jacket won't be as useful to you. All right, so we'll spend 30 gold and give him too many belts. Uh, this will give him a dodge, and when he dodges, uh, he reduces physical damage by 2. So that's 30 gold, putting him at uh, 26 gold left. And then we'll buy one relic, which is going to be probably a fight drive. So fight drive is just once per encounter, you get to just make an attack. Now we're going to give that to our archer. That'll be 15 gold. That'll put us at a, uh, 11 gold left. I think that's everything. I don't know if this is a good build or not, but it's an option. It will hopefully do some things. So first things first, we're going to pass some of the health items around a little bit. Make sure, let's put you there. Well, actually, you can just get items, so you can do that. You can do that. Give Rook that. We'll have you be support person, maybe. Do something like that. All right. I think that's everything. So Remy's using her War Axe. It definitely helped her out. She doesn't have Hammer Helm anymore. Instead, she has Familiar, which is going to give her a, a once per, essentially, campaign uh, throw weapon. Um, but really, it's just all about that extra HP. She has the most HP, um, and she has the second uh, second highest armor. And she's can she's got some dodges and some ways to negate damage. So her effectiveness is going to be kind of interesting to say the least. Zeke has some throws uh, that are per encounter, and can reroll uh, get an additional attack if he ever misses two times. Um, and he's going to be able to put haste on everybody. And he's got leather jacket just for some and utility core, so he'll produce items. Uh, Nightingale's got the utility core as well, so we can produce even more items. And she's going to be our archer for now, and she's going to also be able to heal us. 
She's got her relic for now. And Rook is going to be our essentially our paladin nuker type character. Um, she'll be able to, he'll be able to do eight damage with his casting die, which he's casting die is going to be white because it's going to be due to the finesse here. Also, I can use the the casting die from the warhammer here as well. Also, I think he can empower it by exhausting this. I, I believe that question was mentioned, and it was the answer was yes, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's put this on Rook. All right, I think that's everything. Uh, so at this point, we would actually continue to path to citizenship, but I'm going to go ahead and call this a video. Uh, there's going to be a lot of dialogue as we go into the next parts, so I'm going to call it here. So I am the Depressed Eeyore, and this was uh, Madara. I'll see you guys later.